Welcome to the Jaron Jarvis channel. I am Jaron Jarvis. Today, I would like to introduce to you, I received my demons behind a 7-Eleven. There were two very stupid decisions that lead up to an incredibly painful series of events. Of course, at the time there was no way of knowing that two simple situations would get me into the amount of trouble that I went through. In retrospect, I supposed I could or should have known better, but then again, maybe that was all part of it too. But I suppose I should start at the beginning. It was on a cool February afternoon. I had gone down to my local 7-Eleven for a pack of cigarettes. I walked there because it was less than a mile and I figured I could use the exercise. I walked into the 7-Eleven, and I remember noticing how empty it was. There were no cars parked out front and no one else in the store besides the cashier and me. The harsh, artificial lighting gave me a headache as I walked up to the counter and asked for a pack of camels, paid for it, and walked back out, just like that. I walked around to the back of the store, took the red lighter out of my pocket and lit one, inhaling the smoke and exhaling it into the grey afternoon sky. I was about halfway done with the cigarette when I heard the footsteps approaching from the left. They crunched against the gravel, fallen leaves, and garbage, stopping about three feet away from me. I focused my gaze on a tree across the street and didn't glance at the stranger, hoping they would take the hint and not bother me those give you cancer, you know. Good. This was the first stupid thing I did, replying to him. He didn't say anything, but it was a he. He had a British accent, I remember that clearly intentionally giving yourself cancer? Is that the way to go? He asked. Who the fuck was this guy? I'm killing my demons, I replied, taking another drag demons? He asked, incredulously. Yep. You don't know anything about demons. I finally turned to look at him, expecting to come face to face with a deteriorating drunk. He was quite the opposite in fact. He was a few inches taller than me, with his hair neatly combed back, and a perfectly trimmed beard. He was wearing a suit that looked like it cost more than my rent and shiny black dress shoes. His skin was tan and smooth, and he had the most intense look that I've ever seen in my life. Being gay, I knew a good-looking man when I saw one, and he, my friends, a fucking good-looking man. He didn't belong behind a 7-Eleven, surrounded by old beer bottles and piss stains and what are you? A demon expert? I asked. He chuckled. Something like that. I turned away again and kept exhaling smoke into the sky bet you couldn't live with real demons. Couldn't kill them with that cancer stick either. He said that's what the vodka is for. I replied have we got a deal then? I threw the butt of my cigarette on the ground and put it out with my foot. What do I get if I win? I asked. Playing along one hundred million dollars. He replied. Ship deals, I replied, and I shook his hand. Mistake numero dos. He left then, without another word, and I walked home, without another problem. That night I was boiling some water for pasta. I removed the lid off of the pot once the water was rolling with heat and looked down at the bubbles and the steam. What would happen if I put my hand in there? I thought. It would fucking hurt. That's what, idiot. But don't you just wanna see what it would feel like? No. A few minutes later I stuck my hand in, and let me tell you, it fucking hurt like a bitch. I felt the heat spread all over the skin on my hand, then it turned to cold and then back to burning heat. I screamed as I pulled my hand out and ran to sink, opening the cold water and sticking my hand underneath. It wasn't enough. I punched the wall with my good fist as I held my hand under the cold water. It was now slowly starting to blister. I shut the water off and ran for the medicine cabinet. Without the cool water, my hand felt like it was back in the pot again. I scrambled for some ointment and covered my hand in it once I found it. The pain was slightly gone, but not enough yikes, that looks like it burns. I looked up to see the same man standing in the hallway. Why the fuck did I do that? I wailed. I don't know why I didn't ask the most obvious question, how the fuck did you get into my house your demons? He replied. What? I asked dot demons. He repeated. What? Are they going to kill me? I asked, annoyed and angry at the pain radiating off my hand fuck. I shouted. 
Don't be silly, they won't kill you. He replied what is that supposed to mean? I asked. But he was already gone. Things like that kept happening after that day. I'd think, what would happen if I stabbed myself in the leg with this knife? And then I'd do it, even though I knew it would fucking hurt. Or, what would happen if you ran over that dog? And I'd argue with myself, but then I'd do it anyway. What would happen if you beat that guy to death? And I'd do it. What if you broke into that house and killed those people? Done. What if you cut your left ring finger off? Done. What if you dismembered that cat? What if you threw yourself down the stairs? What if you smashed your head into that mirror until you were a bloody mess? Done, done, and fucking done. By some, fucked up miracle, I didn't die. Sure, I killed some people, ruined some parts of my body, and was missing a finger and some toes, but I was still alive. He shows up again one night while I was thinking about what would happen if I took all the pills in my house do you give up yet? He asked. I didn't even care about the winning prize at this point, so I said that yes, I did. He smiled of course. I told you it wasn't easy to kill your demons, especially not when all of them are you. The only way to get rid of them is, well, he motioned towards the pile of pills that were on my bed so what? You just left me with the things I was already feeling? And that's it? I asked of course. It's a lot easier to listen to your own dark thoughts. They whisper, they persuade, and it's a lot harder to believe the angel on your shoulder, but a lot easier to shut it out completely. Fine. Whatever, I lost. You won. So what do you want? I asked your soul. I stared at his face, but it was serious. I laughed. My soul? Yeah man, sure, take my fucking soul. Hell if I care. I laughed. He nodded. Pleasure doing business with you. He said, turning around and walking out of my bedroom. Wait. There's one thing I want to know. I said yes. He asked, turning around what's your name? His eyes sparkled and he grinned before he answered you can just call me Lucy. He replied before disappearing. The dark thoughts stopped that day. But I don't think that's a good thing. Sure, I'm not mentally battling myself, but now the situation is a bit worse. I don't even have to think about things anymore, I just do them. I'm destroying myself and I can't seem to care enough to stop.